The Wild Swans. Once upon a time, there was a king who had eleven sons and a daughter. Her name was Eliza. All the twelve children were bright and quick learners. They were living happily in their castle until one day, when the king decided to get married again. He was feeling lonely after the sad demise of his wife. A grand ceremony took place. The children were waiting for their new mother. They thought it would be nice to have a mother, but they experienced a different picture. The new queen was a wicked witch and didn't treat the children well. All of them were unhappy to meet her. I want to get rid of them, all of them. To achieve her goal, she sent Eliza to a remote place with a peasant and his wife. She said some dreadful lies about the eleven princes, due to which the king ordered them to leave the castle. Taking advantage of the situation, the queen casted a spell on them. You will spend the rest of your life as ugly, silent birds. Fly away now. The princes were too good at heart for the queen's spell to work completely. Instead of ugly birds, they turned into beautiful swans and flew away from the castle. Eliza wasn't happy where she was living. She was missing her brothers very much. When she turned 15, she was allowed to return to the castle and meet the king. The queen didn't want the king and the princess to meet. The queen was jealous to see a young, beautiful Eliza. She can't be prettier than me. But she pretended to be kind. Welcome, dear. Welcome back to the castle. Let's go to my chamber first. I've got a gift for you. Let me apply this cream on your face and hair to protect you from evil eyes. The cream was the queen's trick to make Eliza turn ugly. When the king saw Eliza, he was furious. Ah, this ugly-looking girl can't be my daughter. Take her away. I don't want her. Eliza was thrown out of the castle. <laughs> I wish my brothers were there with me. Eliza started her journey in search of her brothers. She went into the forest where she found a small pond. She washed her face, and to her surprise, she turned beautiful again. It was a thick forest where the sunbeams were hardly reaching the ground. Through the tall, thick trees, it was getting dark. She reached at the far end of the forest. There was nobody around. She kept on walking. After some time, she heard someone's footsteps. She was scared and tried to hide somewhere. Before she could hide, she met an old lady. Did I scare you? Um, yes, a bit. I come here often to collect berries. Would you like to eat some? Yes, please. I I'm very hungry, and I have no knowledge about the edibles in the jungle. Take these. But what are you doing here? I'm searching for eleven princes. Have you seen them here? No, I haven't. But I saw a few swans with the crowns on their heads. They were swimming in the river. If you go there, you may find them. Eliza thanked the old lady, and started her journey following the river bank. After walking for a few hours, she came to the place where the river met the ocean. There is nobody here. <sighs> How do I find my brothers? She spotted eleven feathers of white swans lying near seaweed. Eleven, they are. Maybe I will find my eleven brothers soon. The sun was about to set, and she saw eleven beautiful swans flying in the sky, heading towards the beach she was standing on. They landed near her, and as the sun was setting, they turned into eleven princes. Brothers, oh, finally I found you. I'm Eliza. All of them were happy to see Eliza. With the spell of the queen, we turned into the swans. We fly like wild swans through the day, but as the sun sets, we turn into humans. We are allowed to go home once a year. We'll be going to castle tomorrow. 
Would you like to join us? Of course I will. I also want you to get rid of this terrible curse. The next morning, the princes turned into swans again. They asked Eliza to sit on a net and lifted the net in their beaks and flew away. Eliza was enjoying the ride as she could see clouds floating beneath her. She also saw mountains, forests, towns, villages, and palaces passing beneath them. By the end of the day, they landed near some caves. They decided to spend the night in a cave. At night, when Eliza was sleeping, she dreamt that a fairy came to meet her. Eliza thought that the fairy looked very similar to the old lady she met in the forest. Hello, Eliza. I know what you're worried about. Yes, I want my brothers out of that curse, but don't know how it'll happen. Do achieve what you want. You should be brave and patient. If you think you can do it, then I'll tell you the remedy. I can do anything for my brothers. It'll sting in pain. I'll bear the pain. Please tell me the solution. There's a special nettle that grows near this cave in the graveyards. You have to pick them, crush them into wax, and weave eleven coats out of it. Throw the coats over the swans and the spell shall be broken. But most importantly, you should not speak a single word from the day you start this task until the end. If you speak, your brothers will die. Okay, I'll do this. Eliza woke up saying this, but found that it was a dream. She looked for her brothers, but they had gone. This is the right time to start the task. She went out and started picking the nettles. It was stinging and paining, but Eliza continued with what she has started. She picked few nettles, brought them to the cave, and crushed them into wax. A mouse was watching what Eliza was doing. He found it interesting and started helping her. At night, when her brothers returned to the cave, they found Eliza doing something mysterious. What are you up to, Eliza? Why don't you answer, sister? Don't keep mum. Please, say something. I think she is doing something and won't utter any word till it is over. The youngest brother went to Eliza and lifted her hands. He saw the stings and burnt hands. He had tears in his eyes. A couple of his tears fell on Eliza's hands. It soothed her pain, and she fell asleep. Eliza continued her work for many days. The mouse was voluntarily helping her. Eliza finished weaving one coat and started preparing for the next. One day, when she was picking the nettles, she heard some loud sound nearby and decided to return to the cave. But some dogs and a few huntsmen surrounded her. All of them were in good cloaks. A handsome young man got off a horse and approached Eliza. Hello, what are you doing here? Can I help you? I can't leave you here in this wild place. I'm the king of this land. You please come with me to my castle. You'll be safe there. Eliza had no option than to go with the king. They arrived at the king's castle before the sunset. It was a beautiful castle, but Eliza wasn't happy there. She used to weep many times a day, reminding of her brothers. The king had brought with him Eliza's wax and the coat she had woven. You'll get all your belongings, so as to make you feel at home. Aha, what a smile! I think I'm losing my heart on you. Eliza had no work there than weaving coats from the wax. She wove ten coats. As she was about to weave the last one, she ran out of nettles. She thought about going to a graveyard near the castle and collect some nettles. So she went out of the castle that night and searched for the graveyard. As she was collecting the nettles, the king's advisor and his men surrounded her. Here you are. What are you doing here? Picking the nettles? For what? It must be used for some magic. 
I had a doubt that you're a witch, and I've proven it, your highness. I didn't believe my men initially, but now... Take her to the court tomorrow. My men will decide her punishment. She should be killed in front of all the countrymen. Or kill her under the elephant's paw. Such witches are not allowed in our country. She must die tomorrow, not later than that. It was decided that Eliza should be banished on an island, far from the castle. She was kept in a dreary cell. She was supposed to spend her last night. Just then, the door opened, and all her coats in the wax was thrown inside the cell. The king has sent this for you. It will keep you warm. This is my last chance to complete the task. But I need some more nettles to make necessary wax. Just then, she saw the mouse in the window of the cell. She started working rapidly. The mouse kept running between the cell and the graveyard. He collected many nettles and brought them to Eliza. She was weaving the last coat till they took her out in the morning. She was sitting in a cart and weaving the coat without being disturbed by the hundreds of people gathered to see her. The ten coats were lying at her feet. The cart was about to reach the ship, which was supposed to take Eliza away. Right at that moment, she heard a familiar sound. Eliza looked up to see eleven swans flying over her head. They sat around the cart to protect her. Eliza had her last coat completed. She threw all the coats on the swans one by one. And the swans turned into eleven handsome princes. Oh! Oh! She is our sister, and she is innocent. I've saved my brothers. I can speak now. I'm not a witch, but I was just trying to save my brothers from the spell of a witch. The princes told the whole story to the king. The king felt ashamed for the way he treated Eliza. I'm extremely sorry that I doubted on you. Will you marry me, please? Yes. Everybody in the castle was happy to know the news about King's marriage. The eleven princes attended the royal marriage. Later, the king along with Queen Eliza and the eleven princes captured the evil queen's kingdom and imprisoned her for a lifetime. The king was thus freed from the witch's spell. They all lived happily ever after.